Welcome, foolish moyles, to this very long, very comprehensive video about Void Stranger, one of the two best games of 2023. I'm Juliet Necro, a goth trans dork who makes video essays for other goth trans dorks. A lot of my comment section is people asking me if they're allowed to watch my videos if they're not goth or not transgender. I am pretty sure that no one who's not a dork clicks on my videos anyway. So that one's pretty much squared away. The answer is, of course you're welcome here. Being two of those things will enhance your enjoyment, however, and having all three is ideal. You can probably see that the footage on your screen is not from Void Stranger. That's for a very particular reason. I am not normally a woman who cares about spoilers. In most cases, I don't believe that spoilers greatly affect one's ability to enjoy fiction. Unless the work in question is a whodunit mystery or something to that effect, I don't consider knowing things about a work of fiction prior to smoking it to be a big deal. This doesn't mean I'm a horrible goblin who spoils things for people who do care about spoilers out of spite, though. Some of the most intense arguments I've had with friends have been on the subject of whether spoilers matter or not. Tempers have gotten heated on this subject in the past. Normally I tell a little anecdote or give an introduction to the game I'm talking about before I introduce myself. But this time I felt it necessary to front load my usual stance on spoilers for one reason. That is to stress with all the earnestness in my evil goth heart that you should absolutely, positively, 11,000% play Void Stranger before you watch this video. I am dead serious when I say that. A lot of what I'm about to say will give you a different experience with Void Stranger than the one I describe in this video, and I really want you to have the blind Void Stranger experience for yourself. For that matter, this video will also contain massive spoilers for Zero Ranger, the previous game by System Erasure. So you know what? Play both of them. Anyone who cares at all about video games as an art form and who hasn't done so yet owes it to themselves to play Void Stranger, and to play it without having someone tell them a lot of its hidden depths before you can see them for yourself. This game also has my all-time favorite video game soundtrack. In fact, as of right now, it's the only one I've ever gone out of my way to buy. Ibrozgi is possibly the best video game composer at using leitmotif to lend mood and meaning to the music in these games. That's my extremely short, spoiler-free review. Go buy Void Stranger on Itch or Steam right now. It's $12. That's only 44 cents more expensive than my old Taco Bell order of a 5-layer burrito, a bean burrito, an order of chips with nacho cheese sauce, and a Mountain Dew Baja Blast Freeze with today's prices as of March 23rd, 2024, according to TacoBell.com. No disrespect to Taco Bell, but a Taco Bell order will only fill you for an evening. Void Stranger will fill you for life. Go buy it. Links will be in my description. Alright babes, now that the non-Void Stranger players have departed to enjoy the game, let's get down to our real business. In this love letter, I'm going to explain why Void Stranger has meant so much to me over the last seven months since I first played it. I truly believe that this should be one of the most important games released so far this decade, and I'm going to describe exhaustively why that is. Let's get fired up. I consider myself very lucky, because I got into Void Stranger very early. This game was released on Steam on September 1st of 2023, and I bought it on September 6th. I bought in early because I'm a huge, huge fan of Zero Ranger, the previous game by System Erasure, the two-person team that made Void Stranger. Long-time viewers of my channel will know this. When prompted, I'll tell you that Zero Ranger is my favorite game. Despite the fact that I really dislike puzzle games, I wishlisted this game and purchased it right away because I was sure that System Erasure was going to do something special. I was delighted to be proven right. I believe that there are three different levels on which Void Stranger should be considered a masterpiece. On design, thematic, and metatextual levels. We'll discuss these in order. Void Stranger is designed in one of my favorite ways a game can be designed. On the surface, Void Stranger is a Sokoban puzzle game. The puzzles are brilliantly designed and perfect textbook examples of how to introduce a mechanic and continue to iterate on it while ratcheting up the challenge. Some of them are also really difficult, at least for me. Some of this game's hard mode and end game puzzles absolutely kicked me in the girl nuts and stole my wallet. However, Sokoban puzzles aren't exactly mysteries per se. Everything moves when you do, and you can see every thread at once since all of this game's puzzles are confined to single screens. So why does the Steam page, for example, make so many references to a mystery? Chapter 1. Trust your wits, and slowly, surely, you'll conquer the mysteries before you. The truth is, 
Sokoban puzzles are not the entire game. I'd argue they're the least interesting thing about Void Stranger. And even then, I have to admit that they're still pretty interesting, despite how much I dislike video game puzzles. Whether you like Void Stranger or not comes down to whether you follow your curiosity or not. A lot of the negative Steam reviews that I've read for this game repeated the theme that it was tedious to repeat the same or similar 200 or so Sokoban puzzles over and over to progress the game's narrative. Let me run down how I came to the conclusion that the Sokoban puzzles aren't the main game. In your first playthrough, you're likely to become voided because you died with no locust idols on hand. If you're really good at puzzle games, first of all, what's that like? I'm garbage at them. Secondly, I think that even if you're really good at puzzle games, you should try getting voided at least once, because the bad void ending is at least 11 chef's kisses. Once you've finished the bad ending musical sequence, you're presented with one more of the game's birch trees. Birch trees appear every 28 brains, you are gently encouraged to end your game session by the fact that the game closes upon resting against one of them. When you launch the game again, you get a snippet of the game's storyline since it starts in media res. The fact that the game's opening cutscene is so vague primes you to approach the game with curiosity, so you should be eager to see those story sequences. When you rest at the bad ending's final birch, you don't get a dream sequence. Instead, the game shows you the first brand that you can create in a 6x6 room. If you start your new run and try to input this as your brand, you will be disallowed. Therefore, you can start looking for other places to try it. The most obvious one screams in your face. Brain 023 is exactly like this brand, just with the addition of a staircase. Creating this brand will allow you to get your first burden, the void memory. Once you have this, a whole chain reaction of secrets opens up all at once. Talking to the first egg you encounter on Brain 003 gives you the tip that you can get three locust idols from a chest instead of one. If you do this on Brain 003, the Void Lord Mon will be there on Brain 004, and they will sell you knowledge about shortcuts in exchange for locusts. After a single voided run, you get the tools to find all of this out in relatively quick succession. Even before all this, on your first run through, Lord Gore teaches you how to skip floors by paying locust idols to statues of Lord B. That's a completely unmissable lesson the game gives you on how to find shortcuts. Unless you manage to find the Void Sword before you reach Gore. Now you know how to pay Mon to learn about secret shortcuts or to look for them yourself, and to make brands in 6x6 rooms to obtain more burdens. Once you have all three burdens and good knowledge of the shortcuts, you can bypass most of the Sokoban puzzles, and now you know how to experiment with the game's mechanics. There are a lot of other juicy details hidden behind obfuscation that you need to poke around a little bit to discover. This game has entire boss fights, and you'll never see any of them without going off the beaten path and experimenting with the game's systems. All that means you really only have to do all the puzzles one time. And on Lilith's run, which is effectively the game's hard mode, you don't have to finish unvoided for it to count for story completion. That takes a lot of the pressure off. Every time I've played this game, I tried to skip as much of Lilith's run through the void as possible. During this playthrough, I visited a lot more rooms in Lilith's playthrough, but reached Sif's domain and said, oh, screw this. Instead, I manipulated the HUD to give myself 99 locust idols, and then warped myself back to Brain 123, and then from there to the end game. Clearly, I am history's greatest genius. It was during Lilith's run on my first playthrough that I discovered you can interact with the game's HUD using a staff. This can also be used to warp around the void, and by the end of the game it's necessary for plot progression and to access a few additional scenes. The Sokoban puzzles are, for the most part, very mutable, so no, you don't have to quote, repeat the same 200 puzzles over and over, unless you're not paying attention or not playing with the right mindset. Void Stranger does its best to put you in the mindset I'm referring to. It starts in media res under mysterious circumstances. It gives you just enough story at each birch tree that you're desperate to see the next one, like the best kind of cliffhangers. And it repeatedly gives you endings that are satisfying, but not quite a definitive true ending. It gives a lot of really tantalizing hints and encourages you to poke at every little nook and cranny. When I first decided I was finished with this game in September of 2023, I have since found out that there are at least four more endings than I thought, and I got three of them as part of making this video. All of this serves to make the player want to keep poking at the game and keep experimenting with its mechanics to see if you can't find some detail you missed or some new insight. Your main driving forces are curiosity and a sense of exploration. Despite every part of this game being confined to rooms that fit on a single screen, I felt like I was exploring a strange and interesting world 
more than I ever have playing a Bethesda game. Void Stranger has a captivating ability to keep you peeling back its layers and discovering more parts of it. I am really grateful to Void Stranger for that, because it's helped me to understand more about what I like in video games. I had inklings of it at first when I played Zero Ranger, System Erasure's previous game, but this game cemented it. We'll return to Zero Ranger later in this video. I'm going to do something bold here, and I'm going to coin a term. A lot of my favorite games are games that have evolving complexity, that drive you to try new things to see the results, and have a sense of deep exploration. They can have wide exploration too, but the important thing is the depth. These games have layers, is what I'm saying. Now when I think of something as having layers, my baby millennial and or elder zoomer brain immediately thinks of Shrek. In addition, System Erasure's previous game Zero Ranger included a bunch of aliens with onions for heads. Therefore, I've chosen to call these kinds of games, with exploration and experimentation as player motivations, and that evolve as you keep going, Onion Games. Be glad I went with Onion Games. I almost went with Tinker Games, and I almost was really annoying and rendered it in German as Zwiebelspiele. Be glad you don't live in those timelines. Other Onion Games include La Mulana, Baldur's Gate 3, Tokimeki Memorial, Tunic, Elden Ring, and of course, Zero Ranger. But those are stories for other videos, or possibly later in this video. I consider this type of game to be one of the greatest arguments for game's merit as an art form. I think the way they're structured, as a slowly unfolding thing to be continually explored, is pretty much only possible in video games. They're also just fun as hell, to be honest. Void Stranger is the archetypal onion game. This game buried its hooks so deep in me that they were sticking out the other end. There were a few Saturdays where I basically crawled out of bed and let Void Stranger eat a good four or five hours at once. I would go on long walks and think about what I hadn't tried, to wring more and more out of this game. I didn't want it to be over. I was so compelled because I had to know. I was curious about what was left to see, and even when I thought I was done, I didn't actually see everything. Even in the process of making this video, I saw things I'd never seen before. I logged 59 hours in this game in September alone. That's quite a bit for a game made by a team of two plus some additional help, and sold for $12. That's why I think it's extremely important that people play this game without spoilers. Discovering things about it is most of the fun, so robbing yourself of the chance to think through the game's mysteries will make it less appealing than it would be otherwise. It really is as much of a mystery adventure as it is a puzzle game. Also, you're going to spoil the surprise that this game contains at least four boss fights and an entire shooting game minigame if you go into it spoiled. The devs encourage this style of play with their tips on the game's Steam page. The first piece of advice System Erasure offers for advancing in Void Stranger is that the game auto-saves, but the second one is of particular interest. If a puzzle seems impossible, get some rest. This is good advice for almost anything in life, to be honest. I have come up with all my best ideas while doing something unrelated to the task I needed ideas for. If you're stuck on something in Void Stranger, I highly recommend taking a walk or going to sleep. If you're as captivated as I am by Void Stranger, then you'll still be thinking about it the whole time you're taking a break from it. Since I consider puzzling out Void Stranger's secrets to be the real heart of the game, you're playing Void Stranger even when you're not playing Void Stranger, as long as you're thinking about it. As of when I'm typing this, Steam says I have 64 hours in Void Stranger. As of when I'm recording this, I have 83.6 hours in Void Stranger. But if I added up all the hours I spent thinking about it while not actually having the game open, I'd be willing to bet that that number is somewhere around 2 200 or 300 hours. This is how you peel Void Stranger's onion, by relaxing, thinking carefully, and yes, by discussing it with friends. The third piece of advice System Erasure gives is, if that doesn't help, try asking someone for help. In addition to being a game that you're playing even when you're not, Void Stranger is also a multiplayer game. There are a lot of single player games that are secretly multiplayer games in my opinion. I first started thinking about this the last time I played Dark Souls 2. I wanted a specific hat that only drops from an NPC invader, that only appears if you light all the torches in the gutter, and I was having serious trouble finding them all. I looked up a video where another player very methodically platformed around the area and lit all the torches. I was already grateful enough to the player who made that video, but then they turned the player camera toward the camera and waved to me. That's multiplayer to me, baby. I was collaborating with another player, even though we weren't inhabiting the same game world. I regret that I can't find that video to save my life. Whoever you were, Dark Souls 2 The Gutter Expert, I salute you. Void Stranger encourages you to speak to other players and learn about their experience, to build out a common knowledge base. Part of the fun of playing a game like this close to launch is watching the resources available for the game expand, 
and contributing to those resources yourself. It encourages a really cool and admirable sense of cohesion and community around the game. In my case, I owe a lot of debt to the people who wrote Steam Guides for this game, and to the goblins who post in the Void Stranger Labyrinth thread on the action button Goblin Bunker. Hello to you if you're one of those people and you're watching now. You rule. The one problem with Void Stranger, and Onion games in general, is that repeat playthroughs aren't as interesting as that first playthrough, when you are making breakthroughs and discovering all of these new interesting things. I suspect that this is the reason that the devs included multiple arcade modes with very high replay value in the deep end game. There is actually another way that Void Stranger is a multiplayer game. They say that there are three ways of experiencing Disneyland. When you're a kid, when you're an adult, and when you have a kid of your own to take there. It changes the experience because you experience a first time visit again vicariously. However, having to pay for multiple Disneyland tickets will probably sour your mood. In a similar way, if you want to experience the magic of a first Void Stranger playthrough again, one of the best ways to do so is by getting friends to try it. It's why I never shut up about this game to anyone who will listen. I finally convinced someone to play Void Stranger for the first time recently, and we've been having a very good time. I've been watching her explore the game and offering guidance via Discord, and it's so thrilling to be on this side of the experience. It reminded me of playing La Milana while streaming it to my best friend who knows that game well. To any other trans lesbians that are long distance dating out there, Void Stranger and other Onion games like it make great date games if one of the parties involved has played previously. If you could see my face right now, you could tell I was giving you a wink. Semicolon 3, I guess. All of this means that this game is wonderful for deepening ties with other people. In addition to its inherent appeal, this is another great reason to try it. It's so much fun to talk about it with other people who know and experience all of its revelations all over again. It's a very special game. And all that from a few little pieces of advice on the Steam Store page. Incredible. Now that I've analyzed why Void Stranger is a mechanical and social triumph, I want to spend my remaining time discussing this game's narrative, because I also think it's one of the best of all time in the video game medium. Also, please note that Void Stranger got a big update with a bunch of new story details and whatnot on April 2nd as I was working on this video. The following story analysis is based on my interpretation after replaying the game, and it doesn't take this new stuff into account. I have a feeling I'm on the ball, though. Well, that's the end of chapter one. Uh, I'd like to give you this opportunity to get up, uh, have a break, get a glass of water. You should be drinking your water. Take your meds if you got them. I love this game so much. It was, it was a genuine effort to not just, like, gush about things that were just, like, not really relevant to my point, so I tried to keep this script as professional as possible. It's not going to be as difficult as it is to keep my next um, video purely professional, and in fact, I'm probably just not even going to bother trying. Um, next one's about Lazel from Baldur's Gate 3, by the way. Just uh, throwing that out there right now. So get hyped for that. Um, anyway, I want to talk a little bit about how obsessed I am with this game's arcade modes. Uh, Zero Stranger is like... It's really cool. It's like uh, it's a bit like Final Boss from Zero Ranger, but more as like a full, a more realized version of that, since it actually has like a challenge to it, and you can lose at it. Um, and like I'm still discovering new things about it now, and I'm like completely addicted to Sif's challenge. I so badly want to get an S rank in it. It's 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 a genuine addiction. It's a problem. Like probably like most of those hours that I got. Uh, so like. Yeah, I've replayed the whole game again for this video, and then I've just, like, played another, like, 10 or 12 hours of Zero Stranger and Sif's Challenge. They're both great games. Anyway, I think that's enough rambling. Let's get back into the material. Chapter 2. In the beginning, when sky and earth were still the same, a flower bloomed, lighting up the space with stars. I'm going to skip over recapping Void Stranger's plot, because... Once again, I stress that this video is primarily for people who have played it already and want to gush about it. This is your last possible spoiler warning before I discuss incredibly spoilery details about this game's deep lore. First of all, I'd like to talk about Grey. Grey is, despite being the first of the three player characters, the real protagonist of the story, and she's a compellingly tragic figure to boot. She's the game's resident angry mother, too many sad dad games these days, and not enough angry mom games these days. The only other angry mom game I can think of is the Metroid series. 
How many other games feature a character killing a man stone freaking dead in one punch? Grey is Princess Lily's lady-in-waiting in the medieval era, and she does so out of loyalty to Lily's departed mother, the Queen. When Grey talks to Tail, Tail takes the form of a gorgeous woman with a fantastic pair of honkers. Later on, when Lilith talks to Tail, Tail tells her that they appear as whoever the person speaking to them loves. In Grey's case, Tail takes the form of a woman not seen anywhere else in the game. Note that this version of Tail has the same white hair as Princess Lily and her daughter Lilith. I came to this conclusion while gathering footage for this video. Holy moly, Grey was in love with Princess Lily's mother. A bit tragic, since Grey is strongly, strongly, strongly implied to be the human form of Lord Ad, the missing Void Lord. Her pendant is the same as Ad's, and she has no womb or ovaries, just like how the other Void Lords are missing body parts. Ad finally appears again in the Void after Grey dies outside of the Void, and she does so to protect Lilith, her adopted daughter. Tail taking this form with Grey takes on a whole extra layer of meaning when you remember that Ad and Aeus are implied to have once been lovers. This puts Grey's devotion to Princess Lily in perspective. However, the fact that she was unable to let go of Lily is what caused her to be banished from the Void alongside the infant Lilith. Her continued attachment to the princess prevents her from making the most of her post-Void life either. She blunders her date with Daniel because of her emotional tether to Princess Lily, for example, and gradually becomes more and more estranged from Lilith since she won't admit the reason for her distance and her parenting style, unbelievable as it may seem. In the end, Grey passes away alone, before she can be reunited with the princess, but her death gives Sif the opportunity to push Lilith into the Void, and unlike her adoptive mother, Lilith solves the riddle of the Void Court. She has no attachments. She makes peace with the memory of Grey, her mother, in a dream, in a scene that makes me ugly cry every time I watch it, and gets saved by Ad from becoming an egg like the other lost souls in the Void. She didn't have anything she desired after making peace, so she had nothing to ask Sif and the Zero Judge for, aside from wishing her mother peace, solving the riddle. That's because secretly, this game was a sequel, sidequel, or alternate universe retelling to Zero Ranger this entire time. The Zero Judge is revealed to have been the human form of Erasure OS from Zero Ranger, who has visited the Void to try and help Sif understand its purpose. My guess for why B and Sif were collecting sacrifices in the medieval era was to try and see if any of them could make it through the Void and into Dis, since even they don't know what Dis is. Sadly, Erasure OS isn't sure either and departs. She does, however, drop the little tidbit that she was so interested in Princess Lily because she reminds her of her sister Despair, and if you look at the two of them, you can definitely see the resemblance. After this, Sif realizes she forgot B, and Void Stranger Sif begins. The fact that we play as Sif after what in any other game would be the ending is so fascinating to me, and it's an indication of Sif's true nature and the player's role in all this. Sif is different from the other Void Lords. For one, they're the only one who has eyes that look like the human character's eyes. B's eyes have black sclera eye, for example. This is because Lord Ad created Sif last of all the Void Lords, which were their attempts to create an artificial minutia who could achieve enlightenment. This rang every Zero Ranger alarm bell in my head all at once. Sif becomes instrumental in opening Dis, since they're the one who fights Mon, unlocking that part of the Super Metroid ass statue guarding the true version of Ad's scepter opening the path for either Grey or Lilith to enter Dis's brand and enter the secret domain. If you get the bad ending during Void Stranger Grey, after the musical sequence, a statue of Sif appears and teleports you back to the entrance of the Void. I think it's quite likely that Sif sees Grey's potential or has an inkling about her being Ad, an engineered thing so that Grey wouldn't succumb to despair, but instead get another chance at solving the mystery of Void. Her nature as an artificial minutia is also why Sif is able to get permission from Dis to attack you in a way not tied to your own movements, unlike her sister whom you fight immediately before. B's boss fight rules, by the way. The three minutia you control are not as tied to the void as every other creature. Everything else in the game moves deterministically, while Grey, Lilith, and Sif don't since they can move with their own will. This is why getting voided prevents you from opening Dis. Lev tells you that if you eat the orange, you'll be tied to Void. In a very nice System Erasurian allusion to both Zero Ranger and the myth of Persephone, because you're tied to the Void, you lose your capacity for enlightenment and can't open Dis. Lev offers you this deal because they're the Lord of Envy, and covet the prize at the center for themselves. 
they want you to figure out all the puzzles for them, so they offer you the ability to cheat death to solve them. Here's the real truth of it. Dis is actually the remains of the primeval fighter from Zero Ranger, and the Void is a research facility designed to study it. If you interact with the HUD to glitch yourself into the background, you can follow a sound in what's a pretty effective horror sequence to see the corpse of the Lotus Duel that made up the center of the primeval fighter in that game. I swear, Void Stranger lore is just as much of an onion as Void Stranger gameplay. You thought it was an allegory for Christian hell, but it's actually been Buddhist this whole time. Also, just one more note. I've seen some people accuse Zero Ranger of being one of those annoying games that's meta on the level of being aware that it's a game. But this isn't actually the case, since the Void is an in-universe quantum computer system. It's not a cheap meta trick. Let's retire cheap meta games forever, yeah? I'll never forgive one shot for immediately deadnaming me by pulling my name from goddess knows where on my PC. If you want to refer to me by name in your game, that's fine, but just freaking ask me! Is that so hard? Anyway, back in Zero Ranger, the theme of the day was sacrificing desires to obtain enlightenment. This took the form of the player sacrificing their accumulated continues for a single shot at the game's true final boss, the primordial form of the primeval fighter. What started the conflict in Zero Ranger in the first place was mortals' covetousness of the Lotus Jewel, which led them to create the primeval fighter to protect it and led to conflict with the Onion Heads. In Void Stranger, this conflict is still ongoing. The Void Lords are all trying to figure out what the deal with Dis is, because they were either based on or literally are former staff of the research facility studying the Primeval Fighter. However, they will never be able to obtain it, since the Void Lords apart from Sif are unable to obtain enlightenment, and thus can't approach Dis. This is why they needed humans. It's why Lord Lev manipulated everything to enter Dis after an enlightened human finally opened it. The fact that the three playable characters are all the ones who are capable of enlightenment is important. My somewhat wacky theory is that the player doesn't control the characters themselves so much as their hope, their desire to attain enlightenment and not give in to despair, and to restore their connections with other people. It makes it an even better companion to Zero Ranger. The bittersweetness comes when you realize that no matter what happens, Grey doesn't get to enjoy either of the ending. In the ending of Hard Mode, she passes away, estranged from her daughter. Lilith only speaks to a dream or vision of her. It's possible that whatever remains of Grey and the returned Lord Ad remembers, but Grey died, missing both Lily and Lilith. In the Dis ending, she is able to reunite with both her true nature as Lord Ad and with Princess Lily, but Ad and the other Void Lords disappear from existence their purpose having been served. In no world does Grey get to enjoy the fruits of her labor. This game is much more explicit in its storytelling than Zero Ranger's more implicit style. That game conveyed the theme of sacrifice to attain enlightenment by forcing the player to sacrifice their continues. Void Stranger, instead, has much more talkative characters who experience this loss and triumph while we watch. It makes it more emotionally affecting in this case particularly when set in conversation with its predecessor. Sadly, the thing that has to be given up for victory to be achieved is Grey herself, no matter the result. There's a reason that both of these endings make me weep. You really do want all of these characters to live perfectly happy lives forever and have nothing bad ever happen to them, but it doesn't seem to be in the cards, at least without letting the mystery of Dis and the problem of the primeval fighter go unsolved. The Void Lords in general are also tragic figures. They were created with the purpose of trying to understand Dis, but by their very nature are unable to do so. Each Void Lord, aside from Ad, is tied to one of the seven deadly sins. Aeus Lust, B Gluttony, Mon Greed, Tan Wrath, Gore Sloth, and Lev Envy. Despite being the closest to being a Minutia, Sif is still burdened with the sin of pride. They're tragic because they were designed to understand this and will never do so. The system will never judge them worthy of the primeval fighter's power due to the sin inherent in their nature, and yet they strive for it. Don't we all sometimes strive for things we know we'll never have? At least you and I have the luxury of changing course. The Void Lords, being incapable of enlightenment, can't. So why did Dis judge Lily as worthy? In the moment when Lev combines with the primeval fighter, Lily has everything she wants. She's been reunited with Grey, and she's escaped her obligations as a princess. Therefore, she has no desires, and Dis judges her worthy. We can all learn a little from Lily. All she wants is to be free and alongside her friend. It's a little ambiguous what happens at the end of the Dis ending in Zero Stranger. It seems that Lev went back in time to when the comet Lilith struck the Earth, turning the Dis facility into void. The text boxes that the Finnish-speaking pilots have are the same ones we see in the flashback to Dr. Lily before the arrival of the Onion Heads. 
The Void Comet gets destroyed in this ending, meaning that Void never exists. Grey slash Ad sacrificed her slash themself, not just to rescue Lily from the Void, but to prevent the whole rotten experiment in the first place. I know we all love the Void Lords, especially B, my precious baby comfort character who has done nothing wrong ever in the history of forever, but the whole experiment of Void is deeply unethical. Countless human lives succumbed to despair and became eggs, so that the Void Lords could see if any of them could ever figure out how to open Dis. After having lived as a human, I think that Ad realized that the best thing to do would be for the Void Lords to end it all and leave forever, and better yet, to end it before it ever started. She saved the entire world that existed before the comet's impact. For a brighter future, to attain enlightenment, a sacrifice has to be made. Lord Ad made the noble decision to be the sacrifice themselves. There's also a prominent theme of transformation in both of these games. Partway through Zero Ranger, your ships gain the ability to transform, as you get closer and closer to enlightenment. And then when you challenge the primeval fighter in the past, you transform into a form similar to how primeval fighter looks in the present. You turn into a little a little lady down there. And there's a similar theme in Void Stranger because we have Ad turning into Grey, and then back into Grey Ad, and then and then into sort of a bug creature. And the, the Void Lords all transform. They have multiple forms they can take. So there's something to be said for the fact that even if we get closer to our goal, we won't quite get there in the way we expect. We will be transformed by the change, and the adventure of life goes on, but not necessarily maybe in the way we expect. So, this is now our second intermission. I hope you're still enjoying the video. Be sure to be drinking plenty of water and whatnot. Uh, if you're working on something while you're listening to this video, please save your work now. This is your wake-up call. So in this intermission, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that I'm playing these games again now. Uh, I was originally going to just, like, stop after I ca captured all my Void Stranger footage, but I was like, nah, I gotta check out that new EX mode. And those puzzles are really difficult, and I'm really bad at them still, so that'll- that's fun. But, uh, the extra modes have been really eating up my time. Like, Zero Stranger, I've been trying to get high scores in that, and now I'm trying to beat, uh, Zero Stranger IF as well. And Sif's Challenge is actually my favorite. Like, Sif's Challenge is so much fun. It's basically like a, a speedrun score attack mode that's super, super cool and very addictive just because it's like you just go for 20 minutes and just try to beat your score from the last time. And similarly, uh, I joined the System Erasure Discord during the production of this video. And if you get a million points with both ships in uh, Zero Ranger, they will let you have a custom color roll, which is very fun. But I have yet to get... I've yet to get a million points with either ship, and I've really only ever played with uh, Type B. So it might be a while before I get there. We'll see. And last, and another thing I want to talk about during this intermission is the music, right? So I already talked a little bit about Void Stranger's music uh, at the start of the video uh, as part of my like spoiler-free review of it, but I really do mean it when like I say that Ebrowski is absolutely fantastic at using light motif. Um, so for example, if you listen to B's theme, uh, which is Buzzing Boogie on the soundtrack, the counter melody to B's theme is actually Sif's theme. Uh, you can hear, you can hear that much more prominently in, um, in, in Sif's domain. And like, it's even played on the same instrument. And this is, you know, reflective of the fact that they're sisters. So B is one of the first Void Lords you meet, because, you know, uh, they leave notes in the game in a couple places you can read before you meet them. And, uh, and Sif is much, takes much longer to be revealed unless you, uh, wind up in the void, unless you wind up at, in Zero Justice, like I did. And there's another track that's really, a really good demonstration of this, and that's Grayish As It May Be, which is the, uh, the theme that, the, the theme that replaces Void Symphony if you're playing Void Stranger's Sif. And it's really interesting because, uh, you know, it's primarily like a, you know, like an upbeat, like, more, like, positive, happy rendition of um, Sif's theme than what plays in their domain. But it also uh, kind of uh, has a lot of musical allusions to um, to It May Be Greenish from Zero Ranger. Uh, and so it's like, it's like a combination of Sif's theme and music from Zero Ranger. And part of the reason for that is that you first uh, take over and play Void Stranger's Sif right after you have a conversation between Sif and Erasure OS. So right after you get confirmation that this game is somehow related to Zero Ranger, you get um, you get some Zero Ranger music, or at least sort of a variation on it. And I just think that's so cool. It, it's really kind of 
like I said, it's it's really impressive. And like Sif's theme is the most notable, but there's like multiple tracks that include Lev's theme, uh, for example. It's fantastic. It's great stuff. And like Gray's theme is remixed in a couple different ways. Like the the main like there's the battle theme that plays in like the JRPG battles. Uh, the one the one in the snow that's that's really Gray's theme. And like the the sad piano music in some of the memories is also that same tune, just play just just like with a different rhythm and on different instruments, so it has a completely different mood. It, it's really impressive stuff. Chapter three, the true battle has only just begun. Not only is the art and music in System Erasure's games always absolutely killer, but they are absolute masters at conveying a theme through both mechanics and narrative. In both Zero Ranger and Void Stranger, one of the most prominent themes is hope overcoming despair, but in both cases, not without sacrifices. In Zero Ranger, the final boss when not attempting the true ending is literally named Despair, and to truly overcome her, you have to give up the thing you hold on to most greedily. Zero Ranger's protagonists both mechanically sacrifice, and they also sacrifice their former lives in order to stop the primeval fighter. In Void Stranger, succumbing to despair in the void is what prevents Dis from being opened. The player's hope to see more of the Void is what drives them to keep experimenting and discovering new areas and mechanics, while the characters equally refuse to give up in their quest for the people they love. Some of the puzzles and discs require you to temporarily sacrifice your ability to use your burdens. Having to kill Tail also feels quite a bit like a sacrifice, since they never did anything wrong, aside from be born from one of the traitorous Void Lords. And you will certainly be sacrificing your time to the Void. In Zero Ranger, it's a little less direct, but in Void Stranger, both the character and the player are always driven by hope and forced to sacrifice to keep moving. Another key part of the theme of sacrifice and perseverance is that it's done in the hope of making genuine connections with others. Grey makes her trip through the Void in order to restore her connection to Princess Lily. Lilith makes hers to make some form of peace with the memory of her mother. Sif makes hers to rescue her missing sister. Connection is what drives us to keep going both in life and in Void Stranger. The developers even state this as an explicit theme via the dev room in PC. I often wonder what kind of future awaits us. As our world grows older, everything feels less and less stable. Despite being more connected than ever before, we can no longer reach each other, even when we desperately wish to be heard, to be understood. I've struggled a lot with this feeling, feeling like my work is meaningless. Maybe, just maybe, the fact you made it this far means you feel the same longing as I do. The lyrics of Voided, the bad ending song from Void Stranger Grey, are all about a person suffering alone because they refuse to allow anyone to become close to them. It's a deeply tragic song. System Erasure has even managed to convey the theme of human connection both mechanically and narratively, since it's what our characters quest for, and because they encourage connectivity, because they encourage community. One of the best ways to experience Void Stranger or Zero Ranger is with a friend or community by your side to share in the joy and the frustration. I have absolutely deepened my connection with others as a result of their work. So if either of you are watching, just know that you did make a couple of meaningful connections in my life possible at least. It's the synergy between character and player motivation that makes Void Stranger such a wonderful game to analyze. I feel like there's still a hundred more things I can say. I can't wait to check out that new EX mode that got added to the game while this video was in production. This game is one of the best arguments ever made for why video games are a beautiful art form. Truth be told, I really needed the replay of the game that I did for this video. I've been extremely stressed and feel stuck in my day job, and I'm starting to confront the fact that I probably have an eating disorder. I confess that I've been something of a doomer lately. If you're one of the people who's been subjected to my dooming, I'm so sorry for that. Things will get better. In situations like this, a lot of people would reach for a game from the ever-expanding niche of cozy games. Usually these games don't have too much friction to them. They usually have some kind of objective, but it's not very pressing. These games are your hangout games, your farming sims, your small business management sims. I personally get bored from these kind of games. I'm a little too distractible to be engaged by games with so little friction. That's why I've realized that the two works of System Erasure are my comfort games. You can say a lot of things about the games System Erasure makes, but you can't say they're easy. Zero Ranger is a shooting game that forces you to start all the way over every time you fail to defeat the Primordial Fighter. You can accidentally erase a whole run through the void with a few misinputs in Void Stranger. They are not forgiving games as a general rule. They're balanced just right in my view. System Erasure balances their games just so so that you're pushed right up to the brink of despair before having a breakthrough. They drive you to despair to remind you of your hope. 
These games are life-affirming, both mechanically and narratively. There's a reason that both of these games include the meaningful phrase, The Adventure of Life Goes On. That phrase is also the title of the Game Over theme in Zero Ranger. It's a little reminder that just because you've been dealt a bad hand and things aren't great right now, you can always, always try again. The Adventure of Life Goes On. In Zero Ranger's case, the first time I beat the Primordial Fighter, I was just about to give up on the game. I didn't wind up doing so, and I've beaten the Primordial Fighter five or six times since then, I'm not sure. At the end of that game, Erasure OS addresses the player directly to thank them. In my case, Erasure OS told me, Juliet, a great power has emerged within you. When I finished Zero Ranger for the first time, it was about two months since I first understood myself to be a trans woman. It might sound hyperbolic and silly, but that was exactly what my baby trans self needed to hear in that moment. It was part of the reason that I chose to come out as a part of a discussion of Zero Ranger back when I started my channel. It's why this video is being released on the two-year anniversary of that video and my channel. That phrase meant a lot to me then, and it still does now. I knew I wanted to make a Void Stranger video ever since I first played it back in September. I originally intended for there to be two more videos in Season 1 before premiering Season 2, but I found myself paralyzed by how rough my circumstances were, and found myself unable to progress on them so I scrapped them to work on this one instead. I am very glad I did. Void Stranger reminds me of what I love about video games, and it makes me truly so happy. In the course of diving back into System Erasure's catalog, I've grown closer to people I've been getting to know, joined new communities, and reacquainted myself with why I love playing games and making videos. I've reminded myself of all the parts of my life that I love, after a long period of wallowing in despair. This game was part of me coming unstuck in life, a second time, just as I get myself stuck and unstuck within the void. Remember those pieces of advice that System Erasure gave for Void Stranger on this game's Steam Store page? I think they're good pieces of advice always, not just in this game. Take it from someone who really needed to be reminded of this. If a puzzle seems impossible, get some rest. There's nothing better you can do for yourself than take a break if you feel stuck in life. Take a walk, see a friend, cook something tasty for yourself or for someone else. All of my best ideas come to me when I'm not actively engaged with the task I'm trying to finish. Bashing your head against the wall of something seemingly impossible usually won't get you anywhere. Put on some sunscreen and go outside. Get your vitamin D and your steps in. If that doesn't help, try asking someone for help. No woman is an island. If you really aren't sure what to do to get back on your feet, you don't have to be alone. Someone in your life will be able to help, or at least lend their ear to you. I am grateful to everyone who supported me during the past two years since I began this endeavor on YouTube, and who supported me in my life since it got a lot more interesting about two years and three months ago. You all mean the world to me. If you feel yourself giving in to despair, if you find yourself listening to the voice of doubt, keep these words and feelings in mind. You'll make it through this. I'll leave you with some words from Brain167. Even when answers escape you and you're ready to succumb to despair, I believe in you. Thank you, System Erasure, for creating such treasures. I really do treasure these games more than I've been able to express in this video. I hope it came across to you in the end. Never forget, the adventure of life goes on. May you attain enlightenment. Well, that's about the end of the video. Uh, everything I say is going to be silly from this point on. The serious talk is done. Don't worry. So, uh, you may have noticed that both of these games end in the, sil end in the two syllables ANGER, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, and I really hope they continue that trend because I find it very amusing. Um, so, just based on that alone, I'm going to completely thro throw out a wild prediction just for fun. The next game that System Erasure makes will be released in 2027. And it will be, it will be an OutRun-like that has, like, you know, System Erasurian style you know, twists and turns and secrets. Uh, and it will be called Road Danger. <laughs> and the color palette will be uh, red and basically it'll be like uh, like the gray-orange palette from Zero Ranger, but with red instead of orange. Um, so it's about a, a pair of anime ladies, you know, doing an outrun, basically. And there's sort of a, there's sort of some story applications there. I, I don't know. I feel like that they could, they, those, 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 th that studio could do a, like a mean outrun, outrun-like, I think. If anyone can do it, it's them, because they really know how to make good arcade games. Um, if I'm right, you all owe me $10 billion. Uh, anyway, that should about do it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, uh, especially if you stuck around all the way to the end here. 
please subscribe and share this video around to anyone you know who's played Void Stranger so you can gush about it with them. Have a good rest of your day. Gray and Lilith are both trans. Open your eyes. Mon makes boner jokes at both of them. Gray has no womb. Lilith gets bullied at school for her hair and her voice. Listen to how deep Gray's voice is. Also, how many cis women do you know named freaking Lilith? That's what I thought. They're trans. Wake up. Pay attention. All right. That's all I've got. I'm going to go play Sif's Challenge. Later, dorks. <laughs>